Help support the companies that support our community. I have a piece of uh, myrtle wood here. It's a pretty plain piece that we're going to use for this project, so I'm just going to going to center it up. It's seven by about seven inch in diameter and about 15 inches long. And I'm going to get it kind of trued up here, balanced up here. That's pretty good. And so what I'm going to do is true it up, shape it, and then. Uh, We'll go ahead and I gotta set up my uh, um, steady rest and the hollowing rig to hollow it out. So I ended up not having to set up my hollowing rig or the steady rest. It actually turned out pretty easy. I just used the number one hollower. <clears throat> and then on the foot, I went ahead and brought that down because I'm gonna pour the epoxy over it. I wanted it to roll around that, that lip there. So I just brought it down a little bit to get a little bit of epoxy around the corner there. And I just did that with a spindle gouge and a parting tool. So it, the wood is really punky, so you can kind of see too that the, the lip of it is, is off balance and it's just because it's sanded down a lot more in one spot than it did, did the other spot. But after I got it, the bottom finished up, I went ahead and sanded the whole thing down with 80 grit to get the rough stuff out and then I went up to 240. And about 240, is, 240 220 is where you want to be so you can get the primer and the epoxy to stick to it. So I went ahead and cleared the whole, or uh, primed the whole thing with gray primer because originally we were going to do blue and gray. 
uh, or blue and silver so you kind of want something close to that so if any anything shines through or any dull spots you you won't notice them we ended up going with different colors after that but it use a base coat that's one of the colors that you're going to use so we, we did that quick coat first and it because i kind of wanted to speed up the whole drying process so i mix that up you mix it up for a couple of minutes just if you're using a paddle at just about two minutes is fine it, it'll start to heat up so and then after that i transferred them into two separate cups and mixed in the color on this one i use crater lake blue and a silver and then we put in a little bit of this diamond dust and this stuff is really cool it's super light and it just kind of floats around the air but it just gives it some sparkle having said all that after we got it done and got it on the piece it just kind of looked like it was just kind of spray painted on there so we decided to sand it and go ahead and put on and mix up some more more colors we were trying to look trying to get it to look like it was you know resin resin finish on it and this one just didn't really look like it but i love the love that crater like blue but for this one we went went with uh something else so the epoxy doesn't take very long if you're using the quick coat but on the other colors we went ahead and went with the slow set stuff so it takes overnight but what we did with that one is we you want to put on a base coat for it and we were trying to get it to have cells on it and i sprayed it down with the alcohol but it because it's spinning it it would affect it just a little bit but it because the resin is constantly trying to run off of it it really didn't the cells didn't stay on a flat surface they'll stay because they're not moving but on this one it's it just kept moving around it would kind of make it run a little bit more and so I ended up stop stop squirting that on because it it just it really wasn't doing much and it was kind of muting the colors a little bit but on the second time after I sanded the blue back down with uh, 220 or 240 I think I went ahead and we mixed up white for the base coat we did a brown a teal and a blue and I just kind of did brown for the bottom and then teal and then blue up on the top and I kind of you know mixed them a little bit because I didn't want it to be just just lines around it so as far as this it's 24 hours for this stuff to dry and you can't leave the lathe running so my lathe is, goes down to 50 rpms but if you turn it on it will create a kind of a bulge in one spot just because of gravity and it, it picks the fat spot of the of the vase for that so what you have to do is sit here we sat here for about two hours and just slowly turned the vase until it's set up it would drip we would turn it around the other way and so we just kept doing that for a couple of hours we were out here and then once it starts to set up I went ahead and did turn I turned the lathe on and because it's still going to take hours for it to dry it's a slow speed and I kept checking it every 10 or 15 minutes to make sure it wasn't creating a bulge in it but then after it got to that point I left the lathe running and the reason I did that was so no bugs would land on it so we have a bug free vase it actually worked out really well you know I, it's hot in the shop here so I had the doors and windows open and everything and because I kept it running for hours I probably let the lathe run for six hours on slow speed and it's we didn't have any dust or anything in it which was really nice and as long as you babysit it for a couple hours so you don't get that that bulge in it it worked out really nice and these colors are I think they they look great it's kind of it looks natural they did <clears throat> they didn't mute together a little bit um and that's just because it's constantly you know for those first couple hours it's just kind of bleeding into itself i was trying to think of a different way i think maybe if we use the slow set slow set and did or the quick set and did the same colors it would set up faster so they might not mute together like that so I'm look forward to maybe trying another one and and uh getting getting the colors a little more separate you know, separated than what they did because they kind of blended together a little bit but I like the way it came out having said that <laughs> as I'm turning the foot down I was just gonna get it down and then cut it off with a handsaw and boom it breaks off luckily it 
hit the lathe on the rim and just chip, took a little chip out and then hit Robin's foot on the way to the floor. So all that was wrong with it was there was a chip out of the, the lip. So I went ahead and sanded, just slowly sanded that off and just made a vase with no lip. So I'm calling this piece the vase of many colors and a couple of different shapes apparently. But it was it's a really fun project. We like we had such a blast down at Stone Co. Those guys are awesome. We spent three days down there with uh, Paul from Paul's Toolbox and everybody at Stone Co. Just fantastic time. I was talking to Mike about doing this project when we were down there and he was giving me some pointers and just, just fun guys. We had a blast down there with them. We were filming. We actually went out to dinner. We took the jet boats down the Rogue River and then went to dinner. So it was a fun time. I really like how it came out. I, just the way the brown and the teal go into the blue I just I really like that and I sanded up the the ends here and the top lip and I just put on the Howards again but it's really cool so normally when you're doing like a resin uh, countertop or something you have to put on put on your colors and then you do a flood coat over the top of it but with this one I and I think it's because we already had the resin on there it's perfect the finish is absolutely perfect there were no air bubbles no little little uh, pinholes or anything it is flawless so really happy about that we didn't have to put another coat on the top of it but i like it if let me know down in the comments what colors you would like to see on the next one because i'm definitely going to try this again and i think we're going to going to try it with the quick coat and see if we can't get it to set up a little bit faster and and the colors defined a little bit more. Um, one more thing before I go, we're gonna be in Boise, Idaho on the 28th at the Woodcraft for their open house. So please stop by and say hi. And then the next weekend, we're gonna be in Seattle at the Woodcraft up there doing their show. So please stop by one of those areas. If you're in the neighborhood, we're gonna be, we're gonna bring the mobile shop and we would love to see you. All right, till next time, take care.